welcome again guys uh, welcome to another video from Shom TA cloning okay so let's do this TA cloning what is TA cloning TA cloning is a process of sub cloning it's a method of sub cloning uh, compared with the uh, conventional sub cloning TA cloning is very very fast and it's kind of uh, very easy to perform the other name of the TA cloning is PCR cloning and in both the cases we we use TA cloning uh, compared with I mean compiled with PCR reactions uh, to sub clone specific gene of our interest very easily and very very fast okay without using any restriction enzyme that is the idea of TA cloning we don't need any restriction enzyme we need uh, not actually technically don't need we need it in only one step but it's not uh, that much big we don't need uh, restriction enzymes in the cloning uh, process exactly and second thing is that we don't require uh, so much of other complexity that we used to have with other cloning systems and cloning processes uh, just one vector is required a specific vector designed for this and we need to prepare uh, the gene segment and then the cloning can be done very very fast without uh, any kind of problems uh, most of the cases now the scenario here is uh, in this TA cloning method there are two three different uh, stages of TA cloning actually first stage is known as uh, the preparation of vector second st stage is the preparation of the gene and the third stage is the cloning stage itself so why the name is TA this is the first mystery right why it is TA okay now T stands for thymine, A stands for adenine. So now we know what it means. You know, we know that A and T pairs with themselves. So in this case, we exploit the AT complementary nature of base pairing uh, to attach gene of interest to the T vector. Okay, the cloning vector that we are going to use here. So here, what we do, I told you that in this case, this is also known as PCR cloning because we are going to tag this cloning approach or process with the PCR reaction itself. So why and when exactly PCR is involved? The scenario is we know in PCR we can amplify the target gene of our interest. Now in subcloning approaches what we do we first amplify the target gene using PCR then we need to purify those, uh, those genes we need to take that out then we need to have separate vectors and then do the cloning. But here we can do that kind of simultaneously after the PCR processing is done. So what we do here in the PCR process you know we require the thermus aquaticus polymerase for PCR because as the PCR requires the polymerization of nucleotide sequences at higher temperatures not all the type of polymerase can achieve that uh, specific polymerase can only do this polymerization at high temperatures those are known as TAC polymerase right TAC polymerase or thermus aquaticus polymerase or polymerase deducted or taken from the thermus aquaticus bacteria so we take this TAC polymerase and we allow this whole PCR process to be done, okay. So once the whole PCR process is achieved, let's say this is the target DNA and the target DNA is completely made. So say this is a 5 prime, 3 prime and this is again 5 prime, 3 prime, the target DNA, okay. So we produce the target DNA. After the production of the target DNA, what we do is we simply add an adenine at the 3 prime site. Okay, we add an adenine residue, extra adenine residue at the 3 prime site after the PCR. Okay, so through whole process of PCR, we allow those TAC polymerase itself to bind and attach one extra adenine residue at the 3 prime ends. So what it will look like, it will look something like this. And at the 3 prime, we have adenines attached. Okay, here is the adenine, here is another adenine attached. Now you can draw it something like this. So one extra adenines are attached at the 3 prime end. Okay. This is uh, the target DNA what we prepare. Okay. The target DNA that we prepare. So once we prepare the target DNA, this is the first stage. The second stage will be the preparation of vector or vector DNA. This is the first stage and we completed that stage. Second stage is the preparation of vector. How we prepare the vector? In this case, we are going to have a specific type of vector. The vector is known as T vector, okay, T vector molecule. Now, the T vector molecule, 
does not have so much complexity. It's very simple, very easy kind of vector. And the vector is linearized and actually we make them linearized uh, using a restriction digestion. Remember I told you we don't require restriction digestion at the attachment or cloning phase but we require it to produce T vector. Now normally the vector is circular but what we do we treat it with the restriction enzyme to make it linearized and once we make it linearized what we have we have a blunt end at both the terminal. So let's assume this is our T vector this is our vector and we cleave it from here. So once we cleave it from here we have a blunt end DNA okay this is the blunt end vector DNA these are the blunt ends right blunt end means no overhang at the end okay. So once we prepare this blunt end DNA okay blunt end DNA then after that we use a specific enzyme which is called as terminal deoxynucleotidyl transferase okay a terminal nucleotidyl transferase TDT it's known as TDT terminal deoxynucleotidyl transferase this enzyme can pair or attach T residues it can actually attach multiple uh, I mean, uh, multiple nucleotide residues but here it attaches T residues at the 5 prime terminal remember sorry let's draw the 5 prime this way they attach T residues at the 5 prime terminal extra one extra T residues at the both 5 prime this is due to this TDT enzyme okay so we produce a vector this is the second stage so we have our target DNA produced com combined with PCR reactions so you don't require any other extra step the PCR step and the tag polymerase can give us this target DNA in the second phase we can produce the vector T vector easily by using deoxynucleotidyl transferase enzyme or terminal transferase enzymes so once we prepare both of them then we can simply attach our target DNA with the vector this is known as T vector right so how can we do that just assume this is the double stranded structure of the DNA okay and at the end let's say this and this extra T and this is also T so thymine is present right there five prime ends these are and now if we add this one it's going to bind how with the adenine okay and rest of the DNA sequence like that so it is attached now okay let's draw the double stranded DNA like that and also this is the whole double stranded DNA like that okay so now our target DNA can easily fit into the T vector properly this is the cloning stage now Require this in this cloning stage, we don't require any restriction endonuclease enzyme, right? Do we? We don't require any. We simply can add them. But remember, after this addition, they can pair with only help of one adenine and thymine interaction each side. It's not very strong interaction. We know adenine thymine interaction is not that strong. So, and also have some breaks, some nicks, right? There is a nick and there is a nick. So we need to fill this nick also, right? How to fill this nick? We need to use an enzyme. The name is DNA ligase. So we use the DNA ligase enzyme to fill this nick, to join the nick. Not actually filling because nick does not require to be filled. Uh, there is nothing in the gap. Just we need to uh, attach the phosphodiester bond. So we need to join the nick right using DNA ligase enzyme so you add DNA ligase which will seal the nick so nick sealing is done then we have our vector with the target DNA inside okay this is how the whole process is done now in the T vector there are multiple examples many different multiple uh, companies are uh, processing one of them example is PGM T PGM T is an example of a T vector it's specifically designed 
for this TA cloning. Okay, so that's why it's known as TA cloning and PCR cloning because the process of uh, the target DNA preparation is combined with the process of uh, the PCR using TAC polymerase enzyme. Okay, so in both this way, once we prepare, we get the cloned product. Okay, and also in this uh, in this whole cloning system, we, we obviously we require selectable marker definitely present in the vector, but we don't require all the restriction in the endonuclease sites or the multiple cloning sites. Now, what happens in uh, in normal type of uh, in conventional type of sub cloning experiments, we need to add uh, the specific restriction endonuclease sites in the primer itself in the primer region while doing the PCR because if we need to take all the products from the PCR and do the cloning then and there we need to use uh, the restriction endonuclease sites should be present in the both terminal part of our target DNA and for that we need to add the restriction endonuclease site in our primer sequence. So when we are designing primers for the subcloning experiments we need to design it in such a way so that it contains the restriction endonuclease site okay that is the thing that is a problem right but in this case we don't require to do that we don't require any of the restriction in the nucleus site to be present in our pi primer we can design the primer without all these complexions right so it's very easy fairly easy to do and also less expensive uh, the primers will be less expensive also but the only drawback about which is a big drawback by the way uh, about this ta cloning is that this cloning cannot be directional in nature because this cloning can be a single direction you cannot do it i mean it, it can happen in both the directions like if you imagine this, you, if you flip it 180 degree, if you flip the target DNA 180 degree, it is also going to bind to the vector. It will not change. It will bind to the vector anyhow. Okay. So, uh, the directional cloning is not possible. So, there is always a 50-50 chance of where exactly and how exactly your gene is going to be inserted inside the vector. That's one major drawback with the TA cloning otherwise it's a very good approach for uh, the convent uh, compared with the conventional sub cloning systems so that's for the TA cloning if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and also subscribe to my channel to get more and more imp important videos like that thank you